Well, it's a way of representing really large numbers and really small numbers in a compact way. So what we do is we want to write the number as a power of 10. And this is you know considered an order of magnitude. So if you're comparing scientific numbers and one is 10 to the second power versus 10 to the third power, you're going to know that the one that's 10 to the third power is going to be a larger number by an order of magnitude of one. But here what you can see is when we write this scientific uh, notation number, you want a single digit, okay, besides zero, in front of the decimal point, okay, to the left of the decimal point, and the other significant digits to the right of the decimal point. So let's take a look at some examples and I'll show you what I mean. So here we have thousands, millions, billions. So this is 3,120,000,000. It's a really large number. We want to convert it into the scientific notation form. So right now the decimal point is right here at the end. Even if it's not written, it's understood to be there. And we're going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 places. So this is going to be 3.12 times 10 to the ninth power. Now, you can see I dropped all of these zeros here. Okay, these are not significant digits. And I have this as 10 to the ninth power, which means it's like multiplying 3.12 times 10, times 10, times 10, times 10, nine, nine times. Every time you multiply by 10, it moves that decimal point one place to the right, making this larger and larger until you get back to the original number, 3,120,000,000. And the next problem here, we have a really small number. This is the tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, ten millionths, hundred millionths, billionths. This is 182 billionths, which is a really small number. So again, what we're going to do is we want this decimal point to end up right here so that we just have a single di non-zero digit in front of the decimal point and the other significant digits to the right of the decimal point. So we're going to move this decimal one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. This is going to be 1.82 times 10 to the, okay, you ready? Negative seventh. So what the negative seven means is that when you see this number, you're going to move this decimal seven places to the left. If you've watched some of my other videos um, working with exponents, a negative exponent, this is really like one over 10 to the 7th power, and this is really like dividing 1.82 by 10, by 10, by 10, seven times. Every time you divide it by 10, it makes it smaller by moving that decimal one place to the left until you get back to the original number. So when you see a negative exponent, a negative power of 10, that'll indicate to you that this is a really small number. When you see that positive exponent, okay, for the power of 10, you know this is a really large number. Let's take a look at some other examples. Here we have another very large number. The decimal point's right here. What we can do to make it a little bit quicker is wherever you see a comma, that represents three places. So we're going to move it 3, 6, 9, 12. So this is going to be 5.001. We need these zeros. These are placeholders. Okay, these are important. And one is a, a significant digit. But we don't need these remaining zeros. So this is times 10 to the... 3, 6, 9, 12, 10 to the 12th. Okay, so if you see this number, 10 to the 12th, all you have to do is move it 12 places to the right and you're back to the standard number, the decimal form. So here, we've got another really small number. Where do we want that decimal point to end up? Here, 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 here? Well, we want to move it enough places so that there's just one digit, a single digit, non-zero digit, in front of the decimal point, to the left of the decimal point. So you can see that's one, two, three, four, five. There we go. So 1.0075. These are significant digits. These are placeholders. Okay. We don't need these zeros. 1.0075 times 10 to the negative, right? One, two, three, four, five negative fifth power. Okay, so that's how to convert from a standard notation to scientific notation. Now let's go the other direction. Here we have a scientific number. What does the 10 to the fourth tell us? That this is a really large number. We want to move this decimal point right here four places to the right. So that's going to be three. Now I'm going to move it one, two, three, four. 
and there's the placeholders, the zeros. So this is 30,000. This one here, you can see the negative seven. This tells us this is a really small number. We want to move that decimal point seven places to the left. So let's do that. So 5.008, I'm going to move it one in front of the five, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, there's a new location of the decimal point, and these are placeholders. Okay, so you can see it's point zero 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 five zero zero eight. Okay, this one here, 10 to the 6, we know it's a really large number. And again, this 10 to the 6 tells us we're going to move that decimal point six places to the right. So this is going to be 3, 1, 2, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we put our zeros in, and there's our new location of our decimal point. Okay, last example. What do we do here? We've got a negative exponent. That tells us to move the decimal point to the left. This is a really small number, so we're going to move it five places to the left. I'll just do it right here. One, two, three, four, five, and we have our placeholders, our zeros. So this is point zero, 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 four, one, one. Okay, so this has been a video about how to work with numbers in scientific notation and converting them from standard notation to scientific notation and vice versa. I'll see you in the next video.